I'd really love to jump right into it. And because this is Bloomberg, I'm going to start with a market question. You know, <laughs> it is auction season. Yeah. And uh, a very basic question, do you guys follow your own markets? Um, John, let's start with you. Honestly, no. Mm -hmm. I, I, when I have a, if I have a painting at auction, it's on my radar. I think about it, but I, but I, I don't. I wait till I wait to see whether it's good news or bad news, kind of afterwards. And and a lot of times, I just it just passes by, and I never know what happened. So so um, I and try not to. That's that's fascinating because you have had such a robust secondary market for so long. I mean, highs, lows, and everywhere in between. And um, was there a point at which you were much more involved, or was it always pretty hands off? In the beginning, I was involved. I I, I cared because it, it mattered, and and it was a, I mean, it did matter. In so, what? In what? I mean, way? It, it was a step to go up. To I, I do remember I was with I actually I was with you, right? Yeah. <laughs> we were at uh, the bar Rachel was working at, yeah. and something of mine sold for more than ten thousand dollars, which was, <laughs> a, uh, <laughs> it, believe me, it was a huge deal, and and. Uh, um, and then other other uh, milestones were passed, and it, and I did. I have to admit, I did. You know, well, pay attention. Like, well, there was also know. the night that the painting went for a lot of money, and then you stopped a mugger that night. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. can, can we hear about this story? All right, yes. all right. The, the first. Yes. <laughs> it's such a crazy well, story. It's okay, so I'll insane. make it quick. Is is uh, <laughs> it was, uh, the first time my painting went for like. Millions of dollars, um, okay. back in two thousand eight. It was like, was it the five million yeah. one or the twelve million? I, I it was don't something remember. crazy. Anyway, yeah. I was something walking crazy. our little tiny black dog, and, <laughs> and uh, it was in Soho. And I was pregnant with our yeah, third child. It was like that yeah. night, yeah. right? And and um, we'd gone to a party at at at, at Cy and mm -hmm. Victoria Newhouses, mm -hmm. and and I came back and I was with the dog in the in the, you know, kind of vestibule. And I saw a mug. A girl was getting beaten up and mugged across the street. Yeah. And I so I so I left the dog in the in the thing, and I, I ran out and I and I and I hey, what are you doing? You know, and and uh, <laughs> you know ran, and then I realized like I'm running after, and they were, took off, and I realized they're what am I going to do when I catch up to them? <laughs> and I, and I, you know, like like I get a knife in the stomach or something yeah, like yeah. that. So then I kind of. I, they were younger and faster, and, I, and, I, and I, I came back, and there was a pile of money on the on the <laughs> and nobody like a there. pile of, yeah. of, of, of twenty dollar bills in, uh, on the sidewalk right where this girl had been mugged. So I, I scooped it up, and then I went back to check on my dog, and then a police car came, <laughs> and 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 I said I saw I saw the whole thing. I got in. It was like uh, you know uh, super bad or something, and I got in, and I was like, Bruh! and they said take the dog, and I had the dog, and and. and uh, <laughs> The they crazy. took off. They went the wrong way on Broom Street, and then the wrong way on on they went up, Broadway. They went up Broadway. It was, it yeah. was totally like, like a movie. Hot pursuit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hot pursuit, like you know, fish tailing around. They the went corners. up town on and, Broadway. And yeah. then and we stopped, and then the girl was there with a black eye, and and like and and they had I don't know. And they got them. And they said, "Wait here," and I and I on a plastic you know seat in the back of the car. And then, and then I got out, and I was able to like, go up and give the girl all her money, like, like here's your money. And that was and, the night that his painting went for the, <laughs> a huge amount of money. Yeah. So like Rachel like, got me a shrink. I, I quickly made him go start seeing a shrink because <laughs> yeah. I thought like, why you are have you? aggression <laughs> issue. <laughs> <Why? laughs> your painting went for all this money, and I'm pregnant. Why are you doing this right now? So, uh -huh. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. You know, I have to say that that's one of the more unusual relationships <laughs> to success at auction that I've yeah. actually heard. <laughs> Um, I'm, Rachel, from your end, yes. you know, you've had a very different, yeah, very different. experience with the market, and, and yeah. I would say that at this point you're considered a real kind of star on the rise. Yes. Um, what's it been like for you, especially in relationship to? Well, I think that also it's very complicated having watched the history of female artists in the world. Right. I was mentioning earlier that I think that women artists get very good. Um, they hone in their skills and they also become, I think, more marketable after menopause. And really? yeah. And there's a there's a whole thing that you could look at with the history of um, George O'Keefe and Louise Bourgeois and even Mary Cassatt and um, Agnes Martin. Agnes Martin, that this idea that there's this veil of reproductive um, 
biology of your body is forcing you to kind of, and also the society uh -huh. is forcing you to concentrate on that. And once that's kind of lifted out of the system, you can um, just see things very clearly. So, so do you find it to be um, perception-based as opposed to the artist I think herself? it's both. I actually think it's both. I think everything is a little bit of everything. Right. Yeah, there's nothing that's just one thing. So I think that um, it's, I've talked to a lot of wonderful um, artists that happen to be women about this now. And I've, like Charlene Van Heil has made some beautiful comments to me and Lisa Scavage and Sarah Z and a lot of uh, Cecily Brown. I have very good friends that are in this, um, in this world. And it seems that you just kind of come into this strength and power um, as and so you get older, which is very different than I think if you look at a lot of male artists seem to have, I'm not going <laughs> to say any names, but I think you kind of, there's a crisis about <laughs> virility and, huh. and energy and sexual energy and that the, the, the youth, it gives you this, this ex aggressive um, power that's really good for making art when you're young, but when you're older, it's a little bit complicated. So what has that meant for you personally and in terms of um, your own practice and how you feel like the art that you've been making has been received. And also, well, sculpture itself is right. a very complicated medium. I mean, sculpture is, is, um, is prey to gravity and to decay, like a body is. Hmm. It's, it's completely different than painting and photography. I mean, photography can change over time with um, UV light and things like that, but sculpture, unless it's a bronze, Ava Hess, all these great women sculptors like to work with malleable materials that are organic. Mm -hmm. So those, of course, lend themselves to time and to decay. And so it's um, like Peter Sheldot's beautiful review of the Richard Serra show that talks about that, that not only is it three dimension, but it's the fourth dimension, which is time. And time takes its toll on sculpture. It, that's so, so it makes it very hard to sell in the sense of the longevity of a market. It's, it's a beautiful, um, sentimental thing that is so incredible, but it's also, it's hard for people to say, oh, I'm going to invest in this and I don't know what's going to happen in 150 years or something, you know, or maybe even 80 years. Well, you maybe make even, a bodily well, commitment. To you make a bodily commitment. You do. It, it's, yeah. it's particularly fascinating then that you gravitate towards this slightly more ephemeral yes. medium when yes. you simultaneously have another artistic role, which yes. is a muse, yes. which is historically something that's considered yeah. uh, permanent and kind of time immemorial. Is. I, is that a conscious choice? No, I think it's actually, I, well, I started when I grew up in um, Miami, and Miami was a changing period of time in the 70s and the 80s, and, and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time for all of that. And so I, I was 14, and I did some work with Bruce Weber, and I got used to 14? this. Yeah, yeah, and it's amazing because he just rephotographed my family this summer. Really? And he's going to put in um, his American Journal coming up, and so it's this. I have a history that I do believe is just natural to me, with just assuming a role of taking on what someone, in particular, a male, wants me to be. I I was very young. And it was male photographers. It was never a female photographer. And they would say, we want you to look like this. We want you to look like that. And I was 14, so I got very used to doing that. It's a natural thing for me. Huh. And then I met John when I was 23. And he was making these paintings that looked like me. We were set up by the stranger because I looked like his work. And I took on the role of then sitting for him. And it was a very natural thing. And I do think that that is something that is hard to discuss now in the Me Too thing, that there are certain things that stereotypically women do that it's difficult for a t stereotypical man to do. Mm -hmm. You take on this role of kind of uh, just being amused, you know, sometimes. And sometimes you can be the artist. You can do both, which is a beautiful, interchangeable thing. And they're different from each other. They don't, they're not mm -hmm. the same. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up. You know, you both have major surveys up yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, John at Dallas Contemporary, you have um, your work of paintings of men. <laughs> um, yeah. And Rachel, your survey at the Jewish yeah. Museum, which just opened, which if people haven't been yet, is 
really spectacular. Thank you. Um, also, obviously, I think grapples quite explicitly, or at least from an outside perspective, uh, grapples quite explicitly, uh, explicitly with gender. Yes. Um, and it's interesting because, as you say, um, you have really had a lifetime of kind of growing up with artistic representations of gender. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fair to say, you might totally disagree with this, that you kind of rose to fame initially um, creating artworks that really were representations of the male gaze. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Is that? I think that's completely fair. And, mm -hmm. you know, <coughs> times are changing. Um, mm -hmm. I think everyone in the audience in their own industries mm -hmm. is in whatever way trying to evolve um, with cultural norms and um, various ideas about acceptability in terms of gender and representation and dialogue. And I'm curious, for, for both of you who, in whatever way, um, have careers that are really centered on mm -hmm. these ideas, how, how the evolution of the cultural conversation has affected your own practices. And John, I would love to hear about that from you first. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, it's a heavy I, question, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess uh, one, one, one snippet that jumps out at me when you say the cultural conversation is actually fairly ominous uh, concept now, and 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 I, I, I like the cultural con like we need to have a conversation. You know, <laughs> it's a it's it, you know if your boss says we need to have a conversation, you you would say like oh my god. So and and in a way, the cultural conversation is sort of like everyone's boss saying we need to talk, and uh, so. I find that a completely oppressive concept right mm. now, um, and I, I, it's nothing but uh, repression, but but uh, but uh, inhibition, uh, from my point of view. Uh, it's affecting artists' um, decision making of what they're going to make because it's so new. Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to be afraid of of of. The cultural police mm -hmm. and the total yeah. de democratization of of offense of of of, of offense taking uh, and but the amplification of that I think is not not particularly healthy. But I'm of course not the first person to say that, and and it's it, well, it's it the pendulum. Cliche, it's this whole thing that it's, there's no middle road. It's it's mm. either one extreme or the other extreme, and it it's you that, know that's that's really interesting that you both are saying this, mm -hmm. John. I mean, from your end, it's interesting because I think that your artwork has always generated controversy mm -hmm. in some way. And I'm, I'm, perhaps you disagree with that. Um, but uh, I mean, it's never just been, oh, nice, what a, what a pretty painting. You know, there's always been um, a lot of opinions about it. And, and so it's interesting that you feel like, and please tell me if I'm putting words in your mouth, but it, that, that the conversation or the, 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 potency of the criticism has changed. I mean, would you say that that's... I th well, I, I can't speak to the criticism. I can say that my skin is much thinner now than it was when I was young. And, really? I, and, I, <laughs> and you know, my enjoyment of, of people's reaction to, to my provocation has, is, is, has kind of disappeared. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't enjoy provoking uh, people anymore. And, and uh, I think that's not, not just because of what happened in the last you know three years, but just getting older, it just it just starts to bec feel pathetic to like you know <laughs> to say the f word on stage or you know like like uh, like, like to be Lenny Bruce all the time you know it's just <laughs> kind of it it, it, it uh, I'm, I've I've gotten or rather I was very immature until I was like in late middle age and and <laughs> <laughs> you know I just I. I <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. I, all I can speak to is my own kind of bubble, and and uh, I find that I don't, I have, I don't really want to provoke. When I was young, I really wanted, I wanted to provoke, partly because I wanted attention. I was an unknown artist. I was an unknown person. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought I was important, and it was a, a grave injustice by the universe that I wasn't well known. And and. Uh, but also the thing that I think has happened is that. Um, the slight nuances are now, they're lost because huh. of this extreme. And so, for example, like, um, John and I have this, like, uh, this 
theory. I've, I love, I love, I've been reading a lot of like Carl Jung this summer and this idea okay. that, that you have to rebirth yourself at your middle age to then be the opposite of who you, you were as a younger person. Huh. So then bec you become the whole at the end of your life. So if you identified more with male, younger, then you identify more with female as you get older in the second half of your life. So John and I have this funny relationship where he as an artist is more female. He makes these paintings mm. that are in a boudoir setting that are extremely, it's a beautiful room, it's soft lighting, it's all just so lovely. And I'm in this man cave that's disgusting and, and it's- Power tools, power and tools dangerous power tools. And revolting bathroom that you cannot believe. <laughs> and so, but then when we come home, we then go into the opposites with our children. And so, like that kind of really subtle nuances in this world is all, it's all lost. You either are this way or you're that way because we're in this kind of revolution. Mm. And I understand that, that like innocent heads will roll because it's a revolution and I get that and I think it's good to change things up a little bit but I also think that it's not fair Hmm. to go after the good guy, who I think John really is. And I mean, he's, they're not going after him, but it's just everybody who's like a white heterosexual male in the art world is just, it's, it's this dangerous territory, which is also kind of crazy, so, you know? So what does that yeah. mean in, in kind of real terms for people who are looking at both of your guys' artistic practices? Yeah. What, um, if anything, has changed in what you guys have actually been creating? And how should people kind of view that if at all, through this changing lens? I, in my view, um, it's, uh, I'm realizing that the provocation that I, that, I, that I tried to cultivate as a younger person mm. was really just, a, was really just a, 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 a ritual to go, it was like, it's like, you know, Nadal touching his ear and you know doing doing all that before he serves. It was just a, it was a thing, you know. It was a kind of a it was a thing I did to try to to try to engage with the outside world. But the important thing uh, is is th this strange magical uh, uh, and it's very prone to superstition. You know, uh, 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 of making uh, art. You're making something. Yes. You're, 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 Which is you're all trying that it's to about. Just you know, it's like yeah, that's so all it's about. Stop trying to go into this. <laughs> I'm being offended. It's just, it's a beautiful, amazing, magical process of being an artist. Yeah, uh, but, but I would disagree with Rachel in yeah, that, in that, in that, I think people who, and, and of course this will insult them even more. You know, the, the, that that one's political engagement itself is is Nadal's you know stuff it, it's it's a it's yeah, a it's a thing to get you to the point where where you where you can where you can do a beautiful dive off a very high spot well Corbet was like sent to jail for this whole yeah he got involved in, in Van the commune, thing, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then meanwhile who cares about that it's about his paintings right. now you know like his so yeah. yeah that's a good point yes Corbet's political engagement you know, realism as Whether a, he as did a, it or he didn't a, do it, who cares? As a socialist, yeah. you know, uh, uh, value. It would make for a very boring essay and, and, and concept, and no one cares. And the point is, what makes Corbet wonderful is his is incredibly deep sexual s psycho yeah. weirdness. Yeah. And, and not even weirdness, but just his, you know, his sister, his mom, mm. his dad, his color, his, where he, his painting, where ability. he lived, I yeah, mean, yeah, and yeah. Th those things. Every child has that inside them, and 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 I, and I and I would even add that that as I got older, um, <laughs> you know, I'm less engaged in in ideas of politics, and much more engaged in ideas of my own childhood. As, yeah. a, as a sort of yeah, as a sort of thing really? to yeah. examine and look at. Yes. I don't know yes. about Rachel, but no, yeah, but definitely. But I think. Yeah. So I. Uh, that's my point is is that is that people do a lot of of superstitious things to get themselves into a place where they can ignore the world and hear something deep, hmm. and um, I sort of think that my political engagement as it were, was, was one of those things, was, a, was, a, was in a way a, 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 a ritual, mm -hmm. a, a, a talisman that I needed to, to 
to, to, to paint. The focus, the laser focus. Well, well let's, um, let's kind of take that and build off of that and kind of talk about the art world mm -hmm. um, itself. You know, you guys are obviously friends with a tremendous number of contemporary mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. um, I think that because you guys are so enmeshed in this world, a lot of people might be extremely interested in knowing artists who you guys have recently kind of discovered or shows that you've seen that that in whatever way you thought was... Never answer this. <laughs> I can't. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the truth yeah. is, we're kind of in our own bubble right now. Oh. You know, it's just like... Um, Leroy Neiman, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But only, yeah. you know, but only the Formula One paintings. I think that's also that's also the really hard thing. Like how how do you keep looking at younger art when you your own generation is kind of eclipsing that? It's very sometimes it's, you don't. Yeah, it's, it's well, very actually, hard. So you know. do you guys collect? Yeah, we buy old art. Yeah, but old things. and we also have art that our friends have given us. Really? But yeah. So we have some. We have a beautiful Lisa Scavage painting. We have a beautiful Matvey Levenstein. We have um, a Cecily Brown. We have Rudy Stingle. Um, Rudy Stingle well, I mean, we, we have, have yeah. But, but uh, you know, like everybody else, I, I, I look at Instagram and I see, I, I kind of see what is happening in the same, at the same time everybody else is. I, uh, we in don't, terms of the art world. What I would say is yeah. we have no, uh, other than our you know, s cultivation and taste, we really don't have any privileged uh, 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 access point of view. Oh. Uh, so, well, so when you guys do in collect, in many ways less privileged. Except tell the story about the um, the piece that's at the um, the uh, the amazing piece of the Temptation of Saint Anthony piece. That your story about that, the one that's at the um, in Dallas in Fort Worth. Oh my Kimmel. God! Okay, this is a really good story. Okay. This is yeah. true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> doesn't Even involve police. Nah, yeah. um, well, um, um, he does have a very good eye, but for old. So stuff. I was looking through. He doesn't know looking, what's going on at all now, but yeah. yeah this was years ago. Yeah. I mean, at least ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, I was in my old studio, so so I was you know, looking through one of these catalogs from from Sotheby's, yeah. and and it was a it was like. I wanted to buy this, like, I, I wanted, I, there was a cheap thing by Jan Pollock, mm -hmm. a, a, a 16th century, uh, you know, one of these kind of um, uh, enunciations, you know, like, <laughs> weirdly drawn dude, like, with, with some scroll coming out of his mouth saying, like, you're pregnant with Christ. And, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and I love those things. German, yeah. German painting, old German painting. Yeah. I thought it was, and nobody wants that kind of thing, and I thought it was going to be really cheap. Um, and then there was another painting in this auction, it was a weird Italian painting of, of uh, a copy of uh, Martin, Martin Sean Gower, Temptation of St. Anthony. He's in midair and there's demons all around him. A, a weird painting, mm -hmm. ground painting, and, but kind of good. And, and it was said School of Verrocchio. And, and I thought... It was $100,000. It was like $100,000, and and, which was way beyond my... But I thought, that's good. You know, I really should bid on this and figure out a way to do it. It's a very good painting. It might be by Verrocchio. And anyway, uh, it went up to four hundred thousand dollars. I think three fifty. Something, something like that. I didn't get the Jan Pollock either. Yeah. And yeah. and and then the thing was over. I, I did. It was one of my first times, like like on the phone. Yeah, he you know, tried like, to like, bid on so them. It's yeah. now to you. What do you say? Is it you know? And I'm like, no, I can't do it. And, and, uh, <laughs> you sucked into it or anything? So no, scared no. doing the because we couldn't. Things. We we really couldn't afford it's it. It's terrifying yeah. doing these auctions. You things. you have a, you set your and, limit and, and that was it. And we yeah yeah and I tell you so so it was by. Michelangelo, Michelangelo it was an eighteen-year-old yeah. Michelangelo yeah. did this painting. It and the kid, and, and the, one of the dealers knew it and yeah. bought it for so the like four hundred thousand. So like you know, an eight-million-dollar painting. Or and whatever, then they sold it, it to the Kimball for. So it's in the Kimball. It's beautiful yeah. painting. And he and he saw it. They cleaned he, it. It's he just, didn't know it's it was Michelangelo, perfect. but he saw yeah. that it was something very good. <laughs> Wow. So that's so, okay. anyway. So have you guys yeah. uh, reappraised yeah. the rest of the paintings? No. <laughs> I, I, what I imagine is probably like some guy you know who's in the art business would say like, yeah, you and ninety other people. No, knew, I don't think so. I think it, it still good. went for pretty. But anyway, it was, it was it was it was it was like <laughs> Jesus. I should have. Uh, yeah. You know, should I should have gone up to five hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's so. that's a real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take yourself. So I think. We're actually um, going to, we're at a point where we're supposed to turn it over to uh, questions from okay. the audience. Sure. Um, and 
I can't really see anyone in the audience. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I know. Neither can uh, I. Lights are fairly bright. Yeah. But um, it's like eyes wide shut when he goes yeah. in. And it's like <laughs> that's that's the that is the password. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> um, Fidelio. Yeah. Well, David, okay. oh, I'm seeing some someone is. I, I, I can hear you. I think the fact. By the way, I collect photography. Oh, fantastic. Unfortunately, a lot of the names. Yeah. Avedon. Yes. Um, That's yeah, not so uh, bad. You know, <laughs> that uh, doesn't Bruce sound Weber. Yeah, yes. I'm waiting for him to die, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But it seemed like it was a conspiracy of every I two know. years, two of I them know. would die. I it was know. really weird. I yeah. mean, I, I was watching it. You know, yeah. so I, and, and Helmut Newton, etc. Yeah. I love black and white fashion photography. And yes. I major into it. Like, I really. Um, I think that the fact that you feel restrained is absolutely disastrous. Mm -hmm. I'm being a little aggressive on this, no. but it is by definition you know. that you are supposed to push the envelope. Yeah. Now I'm an investment banker and, I'm, and I run a, yeah. a hedge fund and I'm a Harvard doctor and yeah. you know I'm supposed to be really conservative. Yeah. And I think that you, you yeah. really, it is your mission in life. Yeah. And the fact that you have been pushed into these corners yeah. or, or even feel it in a little way, it, you, it's not to just shock it's to yeah. bring us to another level of understanding life. Mm -hmm. well, and that's what you are. Mm -hmm. You're a blessing to this world. Thank you. I, and I, I'm not, you know, this I mean, the, so John's yeah, probably yeah. going to be more safe than I, mean, I, I would But I think that, honestly, it has affected all of us in the ar yeah, as the artists. But I think the left, the left uh, who is really wi willing this power now, the left have basically switched places with, uh, you know, the right in the 1950s. And, and, and uh, the rules, the social rules, are set are set, I think, by the left now, and and uh, I imagine you know if you were a, a, a beatnik, you know, in the fifties, you you said, God damn the, the the you know John Birch Society and 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 you know I I, I kind of I I wonder I I guess that this this is all to say I wonder if I'm giving uh, them. Uh, more power than they have, and I'm, and I'm. Well, and what I'm changes me though is that the idea that now there's this whole rule that you're only supposed to make art about whoever you are, that you can't make something that's another person's perspective, and that's really why can't art but be of course magical? Why can't you have a dreamlike experience and it's it's and everyone is terrified they really are but I mean, the greatest artists make make art you know the greatest artists of all you know, I you know say let's just say uh, not a uh, David Bowie you know makes makes art I was thinking about him today for some reason but, but anyway Bowie made art about who he is and who he's totally not you know what I mean mm -hmm. like he's making a, he's making songs that are by David Bowie and then also by like Anthony Newley, you know, like, 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 you know, state, you know, uh, uh, Broadway show kind of stuff, you know, it's, and I think that's the miracle is, is a someone who, who both uh, could project upon the world a completely narcissistic, you know, like the world is what but I see, see the of it, is, is and then and then completely take someone else's. No, but see, if you well. make the paintings of naked women, people see you as a man making paintings of naked women, and I see John making paintings of women that are actually him, that he sees himself as the woman in the painting, and that's what I'm talking about the union thing with the nuances, and because things have gotten so weird, no one can see that anymore. They can't see the subtlety of the beauty of why an artist does something. Instead they say, you can't make that because you're not a woman or you're not a, a Jewish woman or you're not this or that. And it's just, it's crazy, you know, it's crazy. Why can't you make something that's beautiful that you want to make? It's, yeah, you should be able to make yeah. a fool of yourself with, yeah. with, with <laughs> impunity yeah. and, and without people thinking that an injustice, you should be, Rightly embarrassed if you make bad art, yeah. but the idea that you've cr that you've perpetrated an injustice is the is the is the stupid philistine you know. Uh, and a uh, friend of ours asked me, "Why do you artist. make your women like the ones I did for the Gagosian Rome sh um, LA show? Where it's like, why do you make them look like they're beat up? And then John, these women, and John's women look so beautiful. And I said, because 
I've seen what comes out of my body. <laughs> and I can look at it as this beautiful thing. And that's, I like that he makes the, the, this beautiful version of how he imagines it. And it's okay. I just, that, that's all been kind of shot now. Mm. You can't do it. You that's, know. that's extremely interesting. Yeah. Um, let's, let's, it seems like there's, I, yes. I think a lot of people have well, questions. So there is this notion of gender though. And you know, mm -hmm. as there are paintings that uh, when a man makes a painting of flowers, mm -hmm. it is not received the same way I as agree. if a woman would I make totally a painting agree of flowers. And that. so when yes. I look at it, when I look at work, and I'll, yeah. uh, there's a lot of very famous men who yeah. do very beautiful work mm -hmm. that if a woman did it, no one would pay four cents for. Yes, that's and true. And that, I don't know where that comes in in the conversation, yeah. but I do feel like gender ha is still with us regardless Definitely. of the Me Too definitely. nonsense. No, so definitely. And yeah. I do think there, is, there does need to be a change with that. But I also think that, I mean, there, there's, there is something about something's been here for a really long time and it's hard to change it overnight the way this is happening right now and and i mean the thing that i'm interested in is going back to the, again the idea of these opposites that you know he does his thing i do my thing but that also the world has like positive and negative forms and like aggressive and passive forms and that it's been going this way with having the male dominated world for like a very long time. And so if you think while. about it in a term of yin and yang and that yin is, is power and phallic and strength and dryness and then yang is wetness and darkness and passivity, it's hard to imagine what the opposite would be with the left side being in charge. And that's what's, it's, it's a very hard way of trying to imagine how the art world could be different right now. And, and everyone's trying to figure it out, you know? And I do agree that um, it's, it's impossible to um, allow a woman artist to make a flower, a flower painting without it being a woman artist. But, um, but that's what I was talking about earlier. That's what the menopausal thing that I'm so interested about. I, it's hard for me to even see a flower painting that I make without thinking about calling my babysitter to make sure my kid's home from school. It is the way a woman's mind works, you know? And you can't just dis disregard that. He doesn't think about that at all, you know? It's what? like, oh, not whether the babysitter's home. Okay, okay. <laughs> and like, and that's just, that's just the way it is. And you can't just annihilate thousands of years, you know? And so I do think that we have to decide how to take that into consideration. Do you, do you think, do you think that, yeah. a, that, a, that, a, that a, in terms of the, is your view a conservative view or a revolutionary view? And when you think about like. I'm a middle of the road view. I'm an absolute believer that we can do everything as long as we don't go to the crazy extremes. And I think but that- But isn't that itself a conservative view? Not really, because you could say conservative views can then be extreme on the side of not even allowing women to do anything in the traditional sense of what conservatism is in some places. So I think that women have an incredibly strong different take on anything, but it's almost impossible to understand what that is, actually, even for myself as a woman artist. I don't even know how I could make art without thinking, coming from this viewpoint of almost being ashamed of being a woman artist, how I was raised, you know what I mean? In this way, everything is, I mean. That's a, I mean, that's, that's an incredibly powerful statement, yes. I think. Um, it, and it is the truth. It is absolutely the truth. It's like, you know, and I had I, Ursula von Riedensvard, who is a beautiful piece down stairs. These, I had incredible teachers like Kiki Smith and Judy Pfaff. And, and, but it was, it was always a different thing being a woman sculptor than being a male artist. You know, it's, in itself, a woman sculptor is a very strange term. It, yeah. it truly is. I think we yeah. have time for one more uh, quick question. Um, if there's, Someone in the audience. Yes. Uh, good evening uh, to, to all of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I, my question is, um, throughout your careers, uh, y you are constantly bombarded by fresh ideas, new ideas, new paradigms, and uh, you know many new inspirational uh, themes. And so uh, how long is it before that 
theme really sets in your mind and really precipitates into art and you know what is that aha moment mm -hmm. that really you know captivates you to, to get you off to say you know what I, I am set on this and I'm gonna you know go go about mm -hmm. creating what I have in my mind to do yeah I agree I mean, in my case, I think it's it's decades. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, as, I, as I think I mentioned before, I, I you know I think things happen to you as a child, mm -hmm. and and uh, and that's all that really ever happens to you in your life is what happened to you as a child, mm -hmm. and then and then I, I mean, my feeling is my entire adult life has been, you know, mostly. My perceptions and my concept, the concepts I formed, all happened when I before I was, you know, seven or eight. And then the only other things that ever happened to me was meeting Rachel and having children. And and uh, so I think it's decades. I think it's I think it's most of your life mm -hmm. uh, that, that that some ad I saw when I was a little kid uh, suddenly pops up as like an idea for a painting. You know, a, a cigarette ad or something like that, and I think, oh, that guy standing there, I could make that into a painting. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've known about that for for decades. You know, so and then it takes years to know how to make it. It gets it's, yeah. it suddenly becomes like I could use that to make a painting. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think? No, I think that we that's the thing we have in common is definitely that everything stems from childhood, and that and and whatever that feeling was that made you feel really good. At looking at it or feeling that feeling when you were a kid, you tried to figure out how to recreate that by making it as mm -hmm. an adult. And um, and in terms of just a, a visual connection, I think that whenever we have a show, both of us like to um, figure out what the theme is or whatever the, the that force is behind that body of work. And sometimes it takes a while. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't know what it is. and. Yeah. And I would add, even yeah. in making a painting, in my case, you realize what it's about when you're finishing the painting, not when you're beginning yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Uh, or even you know, 10 I'm, years I'm, later. I'm finishing a show now. I'm only now, I mean, I have like four days left. <laughs> it is, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I mean, I'm, I'm like kind of both finding out and deciding what the, 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 the deal is with this show. And the and deadline helps do that. Yeah. That's what's weird. I wonder whether you could just keep going on. The and point, on. I guess, that that means. <laughs> yeah. The point is, these things are existing. Yeah. Are, you know, yeah. you don't. You're not as uh, uh, as much of an agent in in your work as an artist as you think, and and things are kind of set and and you can you can perceive them, and act on them, but I don't think you bring them into being as a in my case as a 57 year old man. I'm not like thinking of something it was always there and I and I and I get the courage to 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 notice it and bring it out and I, I think bookstores are very important and they <laughs> should never leave because with going to the strand when you're trying to figure out what you want just going through the, racks and, and the lifetime it, channel it, you can't do that online <laughs> you cannot look at um, online pictures it's not the same experience it's yeah well on that note, yeah. um, I, it is time for dinner. I think um, we should all thank John and Rachel thank so you. much for a truly fascinating conversation. <laughs>